Hi, I'm Colleen Pearl, the Cool Crone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My videos are going to look a little different for the next few weeks because my studio is completely torn apart. I had a bad leak in my roof which leaked water into my studio and I'm having to do some major repairs up there. So until that's finished, you're gonna be hearing from me down here in my little office. And so I just don't have everything set up the same way. So it's gonna be quite a bit different, a different look. All right, so this is for the full moon in Libra taking place in Libra at 26 degrees, 45 minutes on April 16th at 2.54 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And you should Google for what time the full moon will be taking place in your area. So 27 degrees, it's 26 degrees and 45 minutes. So it's just 15 minutes shy of being a full 27 degrees. And this is much like the first three full moons of the year, which all were at 27 degrees. So this 27 degree mark is really, really taking a hit for the whole first four full moons of the year. So this is an important one. And a big reason that it's important is because it puts it at an angle to Pluto. Now, not all of them, because some of them were too close to make a real angle, but this one is squaring Pluto almost exactly. Pluto is at 28 degrees Capricorn. So this is gonna be an important full moon. So the sun in Aries is all about the self. It's all about your own energy, that spring energy, that everything coming to life energy. The Libra full moon shines on you and helps you to be more objective about that self. So this is a really great full moon. It happens every year at around this time, and it allows you to be selfish on the one hand, but also objective about your own needs and what you're trying to accomplish at this point in your life. Now, Libra is always thinking about what people want and having conversations. So there's lots of talking going on right now. And this Libra moon will bring about many important conversations. What are you willing to discuss? And that is a key issue because what you're willing to discuss will help you to see things in a more holistic way. So I hope you're willing to have some in-depth conversations and some playful conversations and some intellectual conversations. And I hope that this you will allow this to um, change your perspective and help you see things in a different light. When the sun is in Aries, we become self-centered, but not just selfishly self-centered, we become focused on ourselves, literally. And maybe you didn't do that so much before, but once the sun hits Aries, we all take stock of ourselves. We all look within and think about what our needs are. The moon in Libra allows us to look at the other, the other people in our lives and our relationships and try to understand their point of view, which gives us a much more mature, much more worldly perspective on those around us and on our own circumstances. Now, the two luminaries are almost exactly squaring to Pluto at 28 degrees in Capricorn. Pluto is going to push you into evolution in some way, but Pluto always means a sacrifice. So no matter what is going on, you're going to have to let something go. And probably it's going to be attached to something that you don't want to let go or that you just hold on to very dearly, maybe only for sentimental reasons. And Pluto is going to say, you got to give it up. So just keep in mind the larger picture of your life. Try not to get bogged down into the details. This can be, this can challenge you in that now you have to deal with the real world and with your relationships at the same time. So expect intense emotions, expect relationships to be revealed as either quite strong or not so much. And they may be even disintegrating a little bit. Maybe that's your sacrifice. 
This is a moment about power struggles between Aries and Libra, and Aries does not do well with these. So take a step back and allow yourself again to see the big picture. Pluto is trying to help you not repeat mistakes of the past. It's trying to help you evolve and stand in your own power. It's helping you to, it's hoping to help you appreciate what your own power really is. Now, there's lots of great planetary support for this evolution at this full moon. Let's talk about that. The moon is making a trine to Saturn, and the sun is making a sextile. Saturn, being the ruler of Capricorn, where Pluto is sitting, means there could be a way out or a resolution to your situation that involves Saturn. And Saturn rules structure, agreements, timing, things that are concrete. Um, and this will help everyone to achieve a win-win uh, solution. Saturn is also a stabilizing factor. So where relationships or issues in your life have been unstable, Saturn will bring some stability if you choose to address it during the full moon. Now, remember all those conversations that I talked about with Saturn there? Those conversations can lead to concrete change or results. Venus right now is in Pisces, which is the ruler of Libra. This is very romantic. It feels good. It brings beauty into your life. And it also allows Venus to take a step back and be in her own energy. She doesn't have to work as hard as she was working in Capricorn and Aquarius. When Venus is in, in Pisces, she's in her prime. She's supported by sextile from Mercury and Uranus in Taurus, which is wonderful. There lies great conversations and communications and also inspiration from Uranus. Now, Uranus in the past year has been spoken about more as a disruptor than anything else. But when you bring in Venus and Mercury beside her, then you get some real inspiration, some divine guidance from Uranus, which is really wonderful. And I'm referring to Uranus as a she. Um, I don't really think the planets have gender. Um, it's just easier to talk about Uranus as a she when she's in the sign of Taurus. Uranus is also the higher octave of Mercury and Taurus is ruled by Venus. Mercury is foreshadowing the solar eclipse on April 30th. It's almost the same degree. And something is opening up from the Taurus solar eclipse so that there will be new developments when that happens. This will inter be introduced at the time of the solar eclipse as more change. So communications, feminine energy, progress, movement, going forward, seeing things in a new light. Uranus and Mercury blend very well together, especially in a sign ruled by Venus. You may be very surprised about what comes about, but it will be pleasing nonetheless. Now, Venus in Pisces is setting us up for the eclipse in Taurus. And don't forget, our full moon here is in Libra. So both the eclipse and the full moon are ruled by Venus signs. Now, Venus in Pisces happens to be in her exaltation. So she is especially strong right now, which is why she's ruling both of these celestial events. When the eclipse hits, it will be very close to the degrees that Uranus and Mercury now occupy during the full moon, which links them as foreshadowing to the solar eclipse. Venus will be connecting with Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces right around the time of the eclipse, lending even more weight to the eclipse and more significance to the full moon in Libra now. So connections are all over the place right now. So pay attention to the conversations that you're having while the moon is in Libra. The, they, all of them may be foreshadowing for something bigger that's happening at the time of the eclipse. And remember that eclipses can affect you one week, one month before the eclipse, one month after the eclipse, or in many cases, if they hit a sensitive point in your chart, when next time that a planet hits that sensitive point in your chart, then the effects of the eclipse will take place. So eclipses can be complicated. I'll be doing a, a whole video about that solar eclipse, and I'll go over all of these things in that video. So while you're letting go, which is your job during the full moon, you're also evolving and transforming because of Pluto's involvement. And you're not just asking for or trying to gain 
things. You're gaining instead new insights, new connections, new revelations, or even new relationships during the full moon. This full moon will be social and chatty to be sure, but with the Pisces power of Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus, which are at 24, 24, and 12 degrees respectively, there could be a lot going on under the surface as well. Huge emotions, in fact. Now, Mars is also in Pisces at one degree where he's not so comfortable and he has to surrender. This stellium in Pisces is asking you to delve into your own emotions rather than looking at things from an intellectual vantage point. So very, very interesting because the Libra full moon is in Libra, which is an air sign also ruled by Venus, but an air sign, which does put you into that emotional frame of, of mind. So what the key is, is to have the conversations, that's the full moon in Libra, the airy, the intellectual side of your brain, and then allow it to inform your heart. That's where it will be easiest for you to let go and make that sacrifice and to move on and be ready for the solar eclipse on April 30th. Venus in Pisces is in charge from under the water, and there's a lot going on right now. She's connected to Uranus and Mercury by sextal, to Jupiter and Neptune by sign, and to the moon and the sun by trine and sextal. So Venus is really the center of the wheel for this full moon, and everything else is coming out from her. Now, Libra full moon. Libra is a masculine sign. It's an air sign. It's cardinal masculine, not in terms of it's only for men or women, masculine in terms of it's very yang. It's um, an assertive sign. I won't say an aggressive sign, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an assertive moon when the moon's in Libra. It's an air sign, so it's intellectual. It's a cardinal sign, so it wants to start something, and it's ruled by Venus, so it wants to love something as well. When the moon is in Libra, it's social, it's talkative. As I said, you're gonna have important conversations during this full moon. It is a little needy and it's needy in the sense, not so much that they want everybody to um, praise them and flatter them, although Libras love that, that's not what they want. They want to be truly needed. So they want you to like them. They want you to want them to be around. That's what the moon in Libra really wants. And they're very intellectual. So they're very smart and they grasp things and they wrap their heads around things very quickly and very easily, but they're fair and balanced. So they're the first ones that can see the flaw in an argument and they will debate you when they see things that are unfair. So those are also the kinds of conversations that are going to be going on during this full moon. Now, it is a full moon, and of course, it is a time of culminating energy. So anything that you started to manifest in the past is probably coming to a peak now. Um, pay attention to those energies, be sensitive to those energies, and use the energy of astrology around you to manifest what it is you're trying to make for yourself in your life. The yin and yang energy principle is also going to be very active at a full moon. Libra versus Aries, full moon versus sun. You know, there's a lot of this male female push and pull energy going on, which you probably are used to by now. But in the spring, when Aries is coming to the fore and Libra is the full moon, we have this real, real just in your face energy of relationship. How do we deal with other people? We have needs and then there's the other. That's what the full moon in Libra is really asking you to decipher and to figure out. We also have the energy of the full moon forcing you to take three. We also have the full moon energy, which can force you to deal with unresolved issues. Now with Pluto here, you're, you're not going to have any choice whatsoever. Pluto is going to bring those unresolved issues to the surface, and you're going to have to see them, if not deal with them directly. Pluto demands a sacrifice. Don't forget that. And it doesn't mean that you're going to take your you know, Louis Vuitton handbags in the backyard and chop them up. It means something emotional, probably, that you need to let go of, some sort of baggage of some kind. So um, let's move on in this list, and then I'll give you some tips on how to let these things go. 
Full moons are always a good time to let go of negative thought patterns and toxic thoughts in general, but it's the best time to release wasted emotions. Let's say them together. Guilt, fear, jealousy, and disappointment. Guilt, fear, jealousy, and disappointment. If you can pinpoint in your life where you have those emotions, either towards yourself or other people, that's what you need to let go. You don't have to let them all go all at once, but pick one and work on it. And next month, pick another one. This is what is so amazing about astrology is that it can help you uh, harness energies of the universe to take care of issues like emotional baggage, like your shadow side, and really, really eliminate these things that hold you back in life. All right. Now we're going to move on to predictions for all the signs. All right, I'm just going to start at the beginning and go through all 12 signs. So the first sign that we're going to talk about is Aries, and this is your birthday month, Aries, so happy birthday. And the moon is opposing your sun. Now, it may not be opposing it exactly, depending on your birthday, but it is opposing your sun. So this probably is usually a pretty emotional full moon for you every year. You probably love your birthday. You probably have a really great time this time of year. It's your solar return. It's the beginning of the new year for you and for a lot of people. But having the moon opposing the sun at this time of year is probably also bring probably also brings with it some um, emotional issues, you know, some issues that you have to deal with. So the focus for you, Aries, is always on your relationships for this full moon. And this one is no different. So with the moon in your seventh house, you're probably becoming more aware of your partner's needs and how you have picked a partner that is complementary to your own needs, I hope. Now, I'm not saying that all of a sudden you're going to break up your relationship. I'm just saying that that would be, that would be the general idea here with the moon in your seventh house for the full moon. And with the sun sitting in your first house, of course you are um, focusing on your own needs. Of course, you're focusing on your brand, how you put yourself out to the world. Now, for, if I'm talking to an Aries rising, then the sun is in the first house and you are definitely putting an emphasis and a focus on perhaps self-improvement, but more than that, self-promotion. The moon in the seventh house would be reflective of people that you work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you're in a in a business that does some kind of consulting, then that would be your, all of your clients. If it's just, uh, if you work in a more corporate setting, it would be people that you work with closely, your higher ups and such. And so you're really aware of these other people in your life, what kind of relationship you have with them, et cetera. Also, if you're married or you have a significant other, that relationship will also be under the microscope during this full moon. But it is a full moon that really means to help you evolve and transform in a positive way. With uh, Pluto up in your 10th house, I'm sure that you've been getting pressure on your career for a long time to make changes and to transform. You probably have been going through a massive transformation. Pluto has been in the 10th house for you since um, 2008. So it's been a long time that you've been under this pressure uh, to create, create, create something new for yourself. And not in an overnight way, but in a very long-term way. This full moon brings a lot of that to a head. And I think you're going to feel a release, a relief and a release that now you, if you can just let go of whatever is needing to be let go of during this full moon, probably you will feel a great re reward within your career and know that within two more years, you're going to get a huge reward in your career once Pluto leaves that 10th house. 
Pluto gives you great power in your career. So having it in your 10th house has not been a bad thing all these years, Aries. It has been a means for you to understand power and status and to, you, and to define for yourself what kind of power and status you really want to wield. Usually we can't really define and determine how much power we have we have to determine how we use the power we have. It's a very different thing. Some people crave power for power's sake, and some people recognize that power is something to be used for the greater good. Um, you can use it a little bit for your own good. You can certainly be your own advocate, but if you have great power and you use it just for yourself, that's way too selfish and it's not for the greater good and usually that'll backfire anyway aries i think you know happy birthday look at all of your relationships i hope your i hope your career is just going gangbusters with pluto there in the 10th house and i hope that the transformation that you're going through i hope that you can see the end of the tunnel i hope that you can see where that transformation is headed because by 2024 2025 you're just going to reap all the rewards Taurus, this uh, full moon is going to be really focusing on your 12th and 6th houses. You've got the uh, sun in your 12th house, so you're in a preparatory mode or a releasing mode. This full moon for you will be all about letting things go, maybe to do with your health, maybe to do with some aspects of your own spirituality, or maybe having to do with somebody who lives at a great distance from you that you are somehow responsible for, or you're connected in a familial way. Your job and the work that you do with your job is probably under some scrutiny at this full moon. I think you'll be talking a lot with people on the job. You may have made a lot of female friends on your job. The moon in Libra, or excuse me, masculine friends, because the moon in Libra would be masculinity. But moon, I usually think of women when I think of moon. So it could be men or women. So let's just say that you've made a lot of friends on your job um, over the last couple of years. And now with this full moon in Libra, there could be a lot of changing of the personnel. You could find that on the full moon or right around the full moon, you hear of somebody who's leaving, who's been there for a while, or maybe somebody new who's coming in, maybe you know them already, but there's a feeling of collegiality at your work, which is comforting and will help you deal with the things in the 12th house, which again, can either be some kind of a, part, a portion of your spirituality that you're really uh, putting under the microscope, somebody who lives at a great distance that you have some sort of relationship with, um, or it could be you know health issues. There could be health issues at work here too. Sometimes the sixth house is health more than job. It depends on the person's chart, but um, you know your your moon there means that there's a light being shown shone on the health issues right now. So if you went to a doctor right now or during the full moon time, you probably would get a more exact diagnosis um, than at other times. So that's really a good thing. And Pluto is going to fuel that energy to heal whatever is going on. Um, and it may mean some drastic measures, you know, with Pluto, it could be some intense thing that you have to do in order to really heal or transform from that, from whatever the illness or injury is. Gemini, you have the sun and the moon in the 11th and 5th houses. The sun is in your 11th house, the moon is in your fifth house. So this is going to put a lot of emphasis on social activities for this moon, um, groups that you're a part of. It could, could also be professional groups, but certainly groups that you're involved with. Also, your hopes, dreams, and wishes, your goals for life after you finish your career, and then the way that you have fun, the way that you go on vacation, things that you like to do, sports, games of chance, love affairs, things like that. So the moon portion of it is going to be falling in the area for games of chance, love affairs, and uh, sports, and children. 
which means that you're going to be enjoying some of those things. The sun is falling in your 11th house for hopes, dreams, wishes, and um, groups that you're affiliated with. So you could be doing some leadership things in the groups that you're involved with. You could also be really shining a light on and getting information on things that you can do after you get out of your, out of your current career or if you're moving on to a new chapter of your life in some other way. But nevertheless, these two areas of your life are going to be the focus during the full moon. So if you have to make changes of some kind, those conversations that you're going to be having at the full moon are going to be pertaining to these areas. Cancer, you're going to have the uh, sun in Aries in your 10th house and the moon in Libra in your fourth house. So your emphasis is going to be on the homework balance, right? It's all about balancing everything between your career and your home life. The moon being in your fourth house could mean that you have an addition to the family or that somebody leaves. And this could be a pet, it could be a child, it could be a, an older relative, but somebody may be coming or somebody may be going or both during this full moon time, or you may just be having conversations about that. Now, the sun being in your 10th house is always a good thing. So this is the time of the year where you always feel like there's a big spotlight on you, you have big projects that you're in, involved with, or there's something that's going to cause you to get some sort of acknowledgement or reward or boon or bonus when it comes to a job. Sometimes this can also mean that you're going to change jobs or, you know, maybe not change your career, but maybe change the employer for your job because you do have the square to Pluto going on. Now, in your case, Cancer, Pluto is going to be in your seventh house. So you could also be really evaluating all your relationships and uh, determining which ones are strong enough to survive the next like decade of your life and which ones you need to let go. This is most likely where you're going to be finding the sacrifices somewhere surrounding relationships, especially during a full moon in Libra, because that Libra Aries access for everybody emphasizes relationships to a certain extent, but you have Pluto in the seventh house. So that's going to be very intensely focusing on relationships for you. Leo, you're going to have the uh, full moon, the moon in your third house and the sun in your ninth house. So this is an emphasis on learning and you could be looking at possibly writing a book or doing some sort of educational design. You could also be revisiting things from your childhood having to do with early education or just people in your life like siblings or cousins or even just people around your neighborhood. You could be renewing those relationships or just having great conversations with them. The weather is getting better. So you might be having some, you know, backyard parties with your neighbors or having the family over for some for some fun. But the ninth house is there too. And the emphasis for the ninth house is going to bring in a larger focus and something having to do with possibly foreign countries or looking at foreign countries or foreign cultures, foreign cooking, foreign languages, or um, different philosophies of life or even religions. So you may be really thinking about learning something new. And some of the conversations that you have during the full moon in Libra may lead you to the decisions to explore that in your life. Now, the moon is very fleeting in its time that it spends in each sign, but the sun stays in each sign for 30 days. So you would have enough time with that sun up there in the 10th house to be able to really flesh out an idea for, say, publishing a book or studying a new language or a new cuisine or even taking a trip to a new uh, foreign country, something like that might be going on. Now, Pluto will be sitting in your sixth house. So Pluto will be giving you um, the transformative energy pointed at your work and your health. So keep that in mind, Leo, there could be some health issue that you really have to put some energy into at this time and the full moon may really shine some light on that. Or there could be something very intense going on with your job and the people that you work with. There could be somebody uh, leaving, there could you could be leaving, changing jobs, or you could be uh, facing up to some difficult decisions having to do with your own health.
Virgo, you have the uh, sun in Aries in your eighth house and the moon in Libra in your second house. So having the moon in your second house means that during the during this period of time, uh, finances could fluctuate. Also, the way that you are experiencing your values and how you value yourself, how you use the resources of you, your talents, in other words, your skills and talents, these could be fluctuating at this time. And you may find that you want to expand them or use them in a different way or bring in some new streams of income. Just things could be changing having to do with your second house. The second house, again, is your values of how you value things, which very many people value money, but also how you value other things in life and how you value yourself, how you um, treat your own skills and talents as resources. The sun sitting in your eighth house can put emphasis on joint finances. So the finances that you share with another, like a spouse or a business partner, could also come under scrutiny at the time of this full moon. Now, with Pluto in the fifth house, Pluto could be really putting a kibosh on plans that you have for that joint money. Say you were planning a vacation or something, a big expensive vacation. Pluto would probably be bringing up other expenses, causing you not to be able to go on that vacation, possibly. But Pluto's influence is usually not quite so fleeting. It's usually much more long term. So it could be that you're just looking at your finances, both, uh, you know, the monthly or bi-monthly income from a job or career or a business and the joint finances, which are usually a larger lump of money. I usually call the eighth house the house of big money. You know, that's your mortgage. That's your 401k. That's your taxes. That's your home equity line of credit. That's your investments, like your mutual funds and stuff like that. So those big money items are going to come under scrutiny, as well as the money and income that comes in just from a day-to-day -day job or business. So all of those things are going to be emphasized during the full moon and those big conversations that you have probably will focus on at least some of that. Plus, you're going to be letting go and sacrificing something. So what, you know, who knows what you're going to be sacrificing and letting go. But those are the areas of life where things are going to be focused for this full moon. And then we come to Libra, which like Aries has a big dose of this full moon energy because it involves your sign. So you've got the moon in the first house if you're a Libra rising and you've got the sun in Aries in your seventh house. So this again puts a big emphasis on relationships just like it does for Aries. But in your case, Libra, the sensitivity that you're feeling having the moon there in your first house is you know something that you need to express to your partner. Your partner is strong in this full moon. So your partner has the sun, the chi, the life force going for them at this time. And you have the more needy, the more changeable, the more emotional and more vulnerable feeling at this time. However, the conversations will involve talking about the relationship. So Pluto being in the fourth house, squaring all of this means that the home situation will be really under scrutiny during this full moon. So a lot of your conversations may have to do with the strength of the relationship. Is it strong? Is the house strong? You know, you may be thinking about moving or adding to your real estate portfolio. You may be thinking about internally or privately, is this relationship going to last? That's a, that's a question that sometimes comes up. So relationships and the home are really going to be the focal point for you. So big conversations around all of those topics, also big conversations around the idea of is the home stable, not just the relationship between you and your partner, but is your home really going to be up to the task? You know, maybe you have a lot of kids or maybe you have a relative coming to live with you. Maybe you need more room. Perhaps there needs to be some dramatic changes in the home or perhaps you just need to get a different home. Scorpio, this full moon uh, is falling between your sixth and twelfth houses. So like Taurus, you're going to have an emphasis on your health and the job that you do 
and also your subconscious, your dreams, people at a foreign in foreign countries that are at a great distance, uh, or you know, the twelfth house is also the house of self sabotage. So with the moon in the twelfth house, very often we find ourselves having very incredible dreams and getting messages in those dreams. So Scorpio, I would not be surprised if that's what's going on for you with this full moon. And Pluto is going to be in the third house squaring all of this. So you what you're what you need to do, I think, is to try to look at this through the spiritual lens, because the ninth house is the opposite of the third house. And so that's where the relief from this T square can come for you. So there could be a solution there with the involvement of your spirituality. The 12th house also deals with spirituality somewhat. And with the moon there, you can be very intuitive and very sensitive to messages that you're getting right now. So I would delve into that Scorpio. Other than that Scorpio, it could involve a relative or a person that you that you were once close to who now lives in a very far away country that could also be an issue that's coming to the fore during this full moon Sagittarius the full moon for you is happening between your fifth and eleventh houses it's great for you, Sag. You love this full moon. So you've got the sun in the fifth house. That's fun. That's playtime. That's kids. That's sports. That's games of chance and love affairs. So you could be experiencing something really, really fun during this full moon. And the moon in the 11th house is hopes, dreams, wishes, and groups. So you could be really having a great time with groups, uh, probably groups that involve children or involve people who have children. And then you've got Pluto squaring all of that from the second house. So what I'm going to say to you is you've had Pluto in the second house for a long time, Sagittarius. So it's probably not a big news flash to you that your streams of income and your talents and resources have been going through a big transformation since 2008. So I think during this full moon, you could be having conversations with people about more of your transformation, about more of the things that you're going through, what you've changed. And you could be meeting people who are just beginning to go through some of the things that you've been going through for over a decade, and you may be able to help them out. You could also be meeting people, families who have young children, and you may have something to tell them that would be very helpful. There's a compassionate aspect to this with the moon and the sun in opposition in these very, very fun houses. So with things going on in your succeedant houses, it's not so critical. It's not a cardinal house where, you know, it's really the be all end all of your life. It's a little more relaxed. So Sag, this is going to be a fun full moon for you, even with Pluto in the third, in the second house there. Like I said, you're kind of used to Pluto being in the second house, so it's not a big deal for you. Capricorn, this full moon is taking place between your 10th and 4th houses, and Pluto will be sitting in your first house as it has been since 2008. So like Cancer, this is emphasizing the axis between home life and career. And you're pretty well used to making a struggle to balance this all your life, Capricorn, because you tend to be a workaholic. You tend to really focus on your work and make that the be all end all of your life. Although with a good work home life balance, you could have a really, really flourishing home life and family. And I think a lot of Capricorns do. I think the big stereotype of Capricorn only caring about their career is not not nearly as prevalent as, as what they like to write about in the books. The moon will be in your 10th house. The sun will be in your fourth house. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the changeability factor is focusing on your 10th house. The moon is always changeable, right? But it's moon in Libra. So this means great conversations with higher ups. This means that you could um, talk your way into some really plum jobs and assignments during this full moon. It also means that you could gain insight during this full moon into how higher up see you. And with that square from Pluto in your first house, you could begin to understand how to promote yourself 
in a, in a better way or how to counteract some of the more negative things that you're picking up on in these conversations. So it's a really good time, Capricorn, for you to make an assessment of how you're doing in your career and use that information to, to make changes in your life. And that may be the sacrifice and letting go that you need to do at this time. Um, because the sacrifice, Pluto in the first house, the sacrifice is going to be something about you and your own image and how you feel. Hi, welcome back, or I guess I should welcome myself back. We had a little um, accident. That's why my face went, oh, way right before the thunder and lightning came on for Aquarius. Um, a chair was being taken down the stairs and it kind of fell apart and just crashed to the floor. So that's been taken care of, but it caused me to forget to record Aquarius and Pisces. So I'm going to record those now. So I'm sure you love my lovely hairstyle. It's just a ponytail. <laughs> And uh, my makeup isn't, you know, really camera ready, but you're going to get the information. So let's go. So Aquarius, you have the moon in the ninth house and the sun in the third house for this full moon, which means that the emphasis for you, like Leo, is going to be on learning and expanding your learning and communication. So you will find that you're most vulnerable or most changeable when it comes to things having to do with foreign cultures, foreign countries, people who speak different languages, the internet, space, space travel, travel in general. Also higher learning and philosophy and religion. So something about that area, and it could be spirituality, we could throw that in there too, is going to draw your attention at the time of the full moon and cause you to want to engage in that. Or you just may be having a lot of conversations about that, and that may inspire you to go further at the time of the eclipse into this particular topic. The sun in the third house has you thinking fondly about your own childhood education, but also engaging in and appreciating people around you, your neighbors, your siblings, your community in general, the uh, guy that you meet every morning to buy coffee and if you still buy a newspaper, a newspaper, or to get your gas. So these kind of people in your everyday routines and transactions will draw your focus and you will be appreciating them but also you will be questing or searching or looking for the next thing that you want to learn. And Aquarius, I think that learning for you is a lifetime hobby or habit. So for you, this is probably an annual event because the full moon in Libra always takes place in the same place in the sky and in your chart every year. So being a lifelong learner, Aquarius, I'm just not surprised that this is coming up for you. And also it's spring and you're turning your attention towards new things and growth in new things. So growing or expanding your education is kind of a natural thing for you, especially at this time of year. Now, the square from Pluto is going to bring an intensity to this desire and an intensity to your appreciation of your everyday transactions and routines. So this may not change you very much, but it does have you looking within. It does have you seeking answers and looking at your soul growth, looking at your own expansion as far as spirituality goes. It's a deeper inclination for learning than just, I think that's interesting. It's much more connected to your soul growth. It's much more connected to you and your overall mission in life, your overall quest for whatever kind of legacy you think you might leave. And also for you, Aquarius, for the legacy of what you have been giving back to the world, because you, you are the visionary. You're the one who thinks of the betterment of humanity. And a lot of what you do in your life is because you think that the world needs it and that it will benefit the masses. So for you on this full moon, when it's emphasizing your ninth house, it is taking you across the globe and even into outer space. And what can you do to leave both of those places better than the way you found them? You're, you're a big thinker, Aquarius. So I think this full moon is going to be quite uh, provocative for you. And it may set you off on a new journey for 2022 and beyond that is quite fulfilling.
And now we come to Pisces. Pisces, this full moon will be taking place across your eighth to your, se your second house, the moon being in the eighth and the sun being in the second house, and both of them being squared by Pluto from the 11th house. So your values, your own resources, your streams of income, your joint finances, and the most intimate parts of your personal partnerships will be emphasized on this full moon. Pluto will bring in an intensity and a challenge to you to provide for even more people than just you and your partner. So you will be looking at a pretty healthy income that's going on for you. You may have multiple streams of income, but the second house is not just about money. It's also about the way you value yourself and how you treat yourself. Now, the sixth house is how you treat yourself on a routine basis, on a daily basis, all the various little rituals and practices that you invoke in order to take care of your health and your body, probably some of it your family too, but also how you work on the job, how you treat yourself on the job, how you treat yourself as far as getting into a place where you work with people who do or don't respect you and that you're using your skills or maybe being exploited for your skills, depending on your planetary arrangement in your own chart. But the second house really is focusing on how you value yourself. Do you value yourself? And how are you going to move forward in 2022 and beyond using those values to improve the world. Pisces, there's been so many planets in your sign for the last four or five months that you surely cannot have missed the idea that most of the world is looking at uh, giving. You know, how can they help improve things for others by giving, giving of their time, of their money, of their energy, of their ideas. So your ideas are mainly focused on initially you and your partner, your joint finances, your retirement funds, your investments, setting things up for the future with, for your family, probably. But the eighth house is more than just the joint resources. The eighth house is sex, death, taxes, and other people's money. So if you have issues surrounding your sex life that need to be explored, Pluto is going to put those front and center and you're going to explore them. And they will probably come up in the context of values because it's going to bring in your sense of values and how you're dealing with them with your partner, with yourself and with groups. So very interesting full moon for you, Pisces. The emphasis, like I said, has been on Pisces for the last few months, but now we have a full moon that's moving into your second and eighth houses and asking the question, how do you value yourself? How do you honor yourself? How do you take care of things on an everyday basis so that you and your family are provided for? But also, what are you doing for the greater good? You know, are you part of a group that exploits uh, certain groups like animals, for instance? Probably not. But just to throw out an example, are you part of a group that um, excludes certain groups? You know, things like that will be coming up to you. And any groups that you are a part of, you're probably going to be getting involved with their finances too. So you might want to give a good think to these topics before you open your mouth at one of your group meetings. Because um, Pisces, you may have a tendency to take on more than you can really handle. And we don't want that to happen. You've had a good run with all these planets in your sign. And we don't want to ruin it by making you exhausted before July. So thanks everybody for watching this, um, uh, the impromptu ending of the video, but for watching the whole video. Thank you for indulging my little artistic sense with all of the thunder and lightning clips. That was really fun for me to do. And uh, I'll be back in my studio before you know it, but in the meantime, we'll be filming this way. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for sharing my videos and giving me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.